Okay, so now we're on page six and we've been simplifying trig expressions and proof identities using our trig algebra skills. So now we're gonna solve. So on this page, number one, letter A says that I have sine of x equals one half. So what the question is asking you is where does sine equal one half? Well, sine is negative in quadrants three and four, so my answer can't be down there. So my answer has to be over here at pi over six and I also equal one half over here at five pi over six. So those are my answers, x equals pi over six and five pi over six. However, there's no restriction on this problem, which means that I can go backwards or forwards around and around the circle as many times as I want, and I'm gonna to touch these answers infinitely many times. So to go around the circle or the period of sine is two pi, so plus or minus two pi n, and then plus or minus two pi n on that one as well. Letter B says tangent of x equals 3. Well, so what's asking you is where does tangent equal 3? When we made the table to graph tangent, the values that we put in our table were 0, 0.6, 1, 1.7, undefined. That's not one of those values. But if you think about the tangent graph, it had an asymptote and an asymptote, and it went up and down forever, which means somewhere along the line, tangent is going to be 3. So we're going to use our calculator, and we're actually going to type into our calculator the arc, I'm going to type arctan, and just so that you see where this is happening at, I'm going to go into degrees for a second. So I'm going to type arctan of 3, like that in my calculator, and press enter, and it's going to tell me 71.56505, or 71.565 degrees. So my first answer I have is up here, 71.565. And if you put your calculator back in uh, radians, which is where it really should be, and you type the same thing, you'll know you'll find out this is 1.249 radians. Okay, so here's the thing: we have a tangent question here, so we know that there's going to be another more than one of the just those answers. But the problem is, is that we used arc tangent in our calculator. Well, we restricted arc tangent to quadrants 1 and 4, from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. But this wasn't an arctangent problem, it's a tangent problem. So we have another answer. Uh, tangent is negative in this quadrant, so it can't be there. Tangent's also negative in this quadrant, so it can't be there. My other answer is right here, and it's 71.565, or 1.249 radians right here from the x-axis. And if you look at what I've drawn, I've drawn a straight line, and the angle of a straight line is 180 degrees, or pi. Well, that's because my next answer is 180 degrees, or pi radians, from the current value that I have. Well, if you look again on this side, it's another pi away because I have a straight line. So, x equals 71.565 degrees plus or minus 180 degrees times n, or even better because we like radians more, 1.249 plus or minus pi n. Okay, letter C is a little bit trickier. Letter C says that I have three tangent squared x equals one. It's trickier because I don't have the tangent by itself. So I'm gonna divide by three. So tangent squared x equals one third. And then I'm gonna square root. And when you put a square root on the paper, you need to be very careful. Because the square root of four isn't just two, it's plus or minus two. So I'm now gonna have plus or minus the square root of one third which we're gonna clean up and make it plus or minus one, oops, over square root of three, which then we rationalize finally, and it's gonna be plus or minus root three over three. And if you type root three over three in your calculator, you get 0.575-ish, which is a 0.6. That number should sound familiar. It's from our table that we draft tangent with. So if you think about the table, or when we made tangent, it was, zero, and then right here was where we had that point six. Well, that first place is the pi over six. So we now know that uh, my x is gonna equal pi over six. But unlike these other problems, I have a plus or minus out front. So I also have an answer over here of five pi over six, and an answer down here of seven pi over six, and an answer down here of 11, 11 pi over six. Well, the seven pi over six and the pi over six, these two, 
those are pi apart. So I can do pi over 6 plus or minus pi n, and I also can do my 5 pi over 6 plus or minus pi n, because my 5 pi over 6 and my 11 pi over 6 are also pi apart. Okay, so on to number 2. Number 2 says that we have to solve 2 cosine 3t minus 1 equals 0. Okay, I just need to be very careful for a second. I know that they're like, oh my gosh, there's a 3 and a t and there's two variables. Just hang on. I'm going to let 3t equal theta and it's going to make you much happier. So 2 cosine of theta minus 1 equals 0. I'm going to add my 1 over and divide by 2, so now I'm going to have cosine of theta equals 1 half. You know where cosine equals 1 half. That's something off the unit circle. It happens up here, and it happens right here. So this is pi over 3 and 5.